What's up, my friend? Abby here, and welcome back to Ask Abby, where I answer your writing questions and help you make your story matter. It's NaNoWriMo again. Wow, how did that happen so quickly? I feel like it was NaNoWriMo like two minutes ago, like last year's NaNoWriMo, but I also kind of feel like it was three years ago. So comment below and tell me how is NaNoWriMo going for you if you are participating this year. I'm participating this year, but kind of differently than I usually do. I'm not writing a new novel. I am just writing 50,000 words of the current novel that I'm working on, that I've been working on since April. And so far this month, I've written, I think, 3,600 words. Yeah. I hope to write some more later today. You probably already saw this, but in case you didn't, I have a super special thing going on right now for the month of November that's called Letters from Abby, and it is basically a 30-day writing journey that I am participating in with you during NaNoWriMo, and I'm sending you letters every single day to your inbox to encourage you and inspire you to keep writing, plus lots of helpful writing tips and coaching. Definitely check that out if you haven't seen it already. It's not too late to sign up, so if you still want to join the writing journey, you can. You will have missed a couple of days, but that's totally okay. If you wanna sign up, go to lettersfromabby.com. A lot of you have probably already signed up. I hope you are enjoying the journey so far. I know I'm enjoying it. And I'm gonna stop rambling because I have some great questions here to answer today, and I wanna to get to those. So roll that intro and let's get started. Why does your story matter? Good question. What if I told you that there's a science behind every great story? I don't just teach you how to write. I teach you how to change the world with your story and make your author dreams come true. In case you're new around here and you're not sure how this works, here's the deal. You ask me questions about writing and I show up here on YouTube pretty much every other week and answer those questions, okay? Each time I pick three or four questions and here is how you submit questions. There's two ways. Option one is to hit the join button below this video and then go to the community tab on my channel and post your question as a comment there. Option two is to go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and join the Writer's Life Wednesday Inner Circle Facebook group. There you can post any questions you have for the show. Just make sure you hashtag it, ask Abby so that I see it. Okay, let's get to the questions. First question is from Candice. Hi from New Zealand, happy Halloween. I have a query about backstory. The YouTube related clips on this topic suggest the pivotal moment when the MC's misbelief occurs as part of backstory, but my story starts at the actual pivotal moment when the misbelief occurs. The backstory is the prologue. Is this a good segue to introducing the rest of the story? I'm following the Abby Emmons three act story structure and it's just so good as it appears to follow my favorite structure, which is the hero's journey. Okay, few things here. First, Yes, absolutely yes, 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 yes to your initial question. <laughs> Leading with backstory is always a good idea. Some of my favorite, favorite, favorite stories do this and some of the most popular stories like ever do this and there's a reason why. Because you are making your audience care about your character because of something that happened in their past that shapes who they are today. Okay, if I just meet them today and I don't know who they are or what they've been through, then I can't really empathize with them, right? We cannot empathize with a character until we really come to understand what it is they believe, what it is they're afraid of, what it is they want in life. And really the empathy is your ability to relate to them. And you said that it's similar to the hero's journey. The hero's journey is a different structure than the three-act story structure and there are differences for sure between the two of them but there will be similarities as well. So I saw some comments coming in on this post giving a few story examples and one person said they gave the examples of two Disney movies, which just go, go like observe Disney movies and study them because they use the backstory thing at the beginning all the time. And what does it do? It makes you care about the protagonist like five minutes into the film and then they got you. They have your attention and they will hold your attention because you care about the characters. Okay, it doesn't really matter what kind of story it is or what adventure the characters go on. You care about the characters, so you're gonna keep watching it. But, backtracking Abby. The two examples that were given were, um, I think someone said Finding Nemo and Up. Now those are two very different examples because of the backstory. So with Up, which I've only seen once, so I don't really remember it super well, but I think there's like this 
montage where you go over like years of the protagonist's life at the beginning and it all happens very quickly but it's a great smooth visual format that it pulls you through really quickly but that's not something that you can easily translate into writing right so with a movie format with a visual format it's easy to give the audience a lot of backstory really quickly because you can kind of go through this montage not saying you can't write a montage you can We'll talk about that in another video, but with written backstory in a book, it's not always easy to do that. However, let's take the other example, Finding Nemo. I know that the pivotal backstory scene in that is just one scene, right? You really only just see one scene where the protagonist's misbelief takes root and then it goes to years and years later where we see the result of this misbelief, okay? So that's a good example of how you don't need a whole montage of events leading up to this moment necessarily to build a compelling backstory. It could be one scene, one scene that changes everything. Okay, I could talk about backstory forever, so I'm gonna move on. Hopefully that was helpful. Next question is from Alex. Hey, uh, ask Abby talking about character motivations. Is it enough for a side character to just want their friends to be happy? I've heard this isn't a strong enough goal, but I often have characters who are just that kind of altruistic. What qualifies as a good goal or motivation? There are so many, there is like so much to talk about here. <laughs> um, so I've made several videos on side characters and subplots in the past. Check those out, they're linked below this video. But as far as goals go, goals for side characters are really fun, in my opinion, because they give you this really cool, unique opportunity to have sub themes. Okay, that's what I really like to think of it as. It's like, if this character is going to have a character arc, then they're going to have the opportunity to learn the truth about something. So what is another truth that I'm excited about that I wanna write into this story that isn't necessarily going to take center stage because it's not really the main theme of the story, but it is important to me and I want to include it. Your side characters can have that truth, can have that aha moment that they arrive at through their character journey. Now, this, what you're describing here, it sounds more like a flat character arc, which I haven't talked about yet, but maybe I will sometime, <laughs> where they just kind of like want the best for their friends the whole time. And that's totally fine, okay? It's totally fine to have altruistic characters who just want their friends to be happy. But ask yourself, what is this character struggling with internally? They don't necessarily have to go on a transformative journey, okay? They might stay kind of just like flat character arc the whole time. They might not have a roller coaster ride of a journey, but they do have to have their own struggle, okay? They have to have their own internal conflict, their own misbeliefs, their own feelings and desires and goals, okay? They need to be human. They need to have flaws. Otherwise, they're just annoying. Like they're the, the stereotypical like Mary Sue character who's just like perfect and is always there helping everybody and nobody can relate to that. So you want your side characters to be relatable. You want them to have flaws and shortcomings and desires and fears and misbeliefs, but they don't necessarily have to go on a whole journey, okay? So it is important to ask yourself when you're at the start of this, like, do I want this character to have a whole character arc or do I just, am I happy with them having like a flat arc? But either way, they need to have their own internal conflict. So for more on side characters, check out the links below this video and also my side character profile which I talk about, I think in this video, yeah. Okay, next question is from Chloe. Hey everyone and Ask Abby. Plotting question regarding introductions and inciting incidents. Each chapter of my adult fantasy work in progress is on the potato chip side, averaging 2100 to 2500 words. I'm aiming for around 42 chapters total. Would it be too late in the game to have my inciting incident at the end of chapter three? The first two chapters are hopefully not uneventful, but they're more to set up my MC's inner and outer conflict. Thanks for any feedback. So chapter three is not too late as long as you are really using those first two chapters to set up internal conflict. Because like we said about the backstory thing at the beginning of this video, what matters the most, more than anything else at the beginning of your story is making your audience care about your characters, about your main character specifically. They have to care, okay? They have to empathize. 
And even better if you're starting with backstory. <laughs> backstory is just uh, it's so good. <laughs> There's a reason why, okay, I won't go into the whole thing, but check out my video on the hook, okay? <laughs> Four to 5,000 words, that'll probably take somebody at least 20 minutes to read, maybe longer. So you have to ask yourself, like for instance, when you're watching a movie, and I know that it's a completely different format, and this is an adult fantasy book, so people, your readers might have longer attention spans based on the genre and the age bracket, but all of that aside, people are people, okay? We live in the generation of microwaves and elevators and the internet, and we don't have long attention spans. So you have to ask yourself, if you were watching a, a fantasy movie or a TV series, let's say, let's make it longer, and you watched the first 20 minutes of it, what would pull you in, okay? If the inciting incident did not happen until 25 minutes into the show, what else would pull you in? And Yes, I'm asking you a question. <laughs> I'm not really answering your question. I'm answering your question with a question because I think it's really important to ask yourself questions like this as a writer. This is how I learned most of what I know about story and storytelling is I ask myself the right questions. I look at my favorite stories and my favorite stories are gonna be different than your favorite stories. And that's why it's a very personal experience to learn about storytelling because you look at what is it that pulls me in what is it that affects me, impacts me, that holds my attention? And then you can create a formula for that because you start to see these similarities. You start to see what is the common denominator here. Just ask yourself these questions, even use them as journaling prompts and start writing down what comes to mind. Start studying some of your favorite stories. Look at stories that have uh, an inciting incident show up later and then ask yourself, what is it that kept my attention and held my attention until that moment? Or what is it that maybe lost my attention that I didn't make it to the inciting incident? So start there and make sure that you are always, always using those first few valuable pages to really connect with your reader based on your protagonist's internal conflict. Okay, last question is from Kimberly. Can we talk about book blurbs? How much should one disclose? Spoil the inciting incident? Cover the romantic subplot? If multiple timelines and point of views, do I need to mention them all? This may be the hardest thing I've done except pick the title, but that's another headache altogether. Yes, we most certainly can talk about book, book blurbs. Book blurbs have to be one of the most difficult things that you will ever write. Yes, way more difficult than your book. <laughs> because, I mean, think about it. You're trying to take your whole book and then squish it into like 300 words, maybe less. You probably needed like 100,000 words to tell that story, not 300 words. So it's tricky for sure. The biggest mistake people make with book blurbs is by making them too extreme one way or the other. And what I mean by that is they will either be way too vague or way too detailed. So some book blurbs will be like 500 words long and they are so detailed, naming all these characters, going into all these specific details about specific plot points. And by the time you reach the end of the book blurb, you feel like you've already read the whole book. And that does not sell you on a book, okay? Nobody's gonna buy the book if they feel like they already read the book and they know what's gonna happen and it doesn't even sound that interesting to them. On the flip side of that, we have the too vague book blurb, which is that we don't tell you any specific details. We just tell you like their secrets and their lies and there's drama and this person said this about it. Don't you wanna buy this book? No, actually, because I have no idea what it's about. <laughs> so it's really a matter of finding that equilibrium between those two things. How do I keep it mysterious so that people will want more, so that they'll be hungry for more and want to read the book, but how do I also give them enough detail so that they have an image in their mind and they can see some of the stuff that's gonna happen in this book, but not all of it, okay? You want it to be like a good movie trailer and you want it to be like a mental trailer in the person's mind, okay? I'm sure you've seen a lot of movie trailers where you feel like you watched the whole movie. That was a good movie, only lasted four minutes. <laughs> but on the flip side of that, you also have probably seen trailers that don't give you like hardly any information to go on and you're like, I don't really know what that's about. 
a lot of cool b-roll maybe some cool music but i don't really care about any of the characters because i don't even know who they are what their names are what they're struggling with what is this story about we have to know certain specific details like the inciting incident yes spoil the inciting incident because it's not really spoiling it it's setting the stage for the story it's telling your readers your potential readers <laughs> what is actually going to shove your character outside their comfort zone and why it matters so much to them. Okay, if we don't know what it is, then we don't know why it matters to them. It's tricky, I know, it's so tricky. And that is why I've created something super special and I'm in the final stages of working on it. So it's not quite done yet, but I hope to release it soon, hopefully before the end of the year, but we'll see, I'm not making any promises, but it is a bookler masterclass, which I'm so excited for. And inside the masterclass, there's something really, really special. And it is a template for writing book blurbs. Okay. I've created a template that is basically fill in the blank. <laughs> and it goes through, uh, the masterclass is going to go through showing you how to use the template. It's going to be great. I'm not going to go into it all right now because I want to save some surprises for later, but you're going to love it. I am definitely going to DM you when it is ready, Kimberly, because you're going to love this template. It's going to make your life so much easier. It's going to make so many authors lives so much easier because what I did was I essentially found the best book blurbs that really catch your attention, took the three act story structure and all the principles that I use there, took all the book blurbs I've ever written, which is more than just a hundred days of sunlight. I write them for my sister's books. I have written them for other books that I haven't published yet and distilled all of this down into an exact formula because you know how much I love formulas you know how much I love finding the scientific evidence behind things and what is the method to this madness how does this work I figured that out about book blurbs and I'm really excited to share it with you so stay tuned for that that's coming soon okay that's it Great questions, as always. I hope you got something valuable out of my replies. And if you would like your question answered here on YouTube, you know what to do. Either hit the join button below this video or go to patreon.com slash Abby Emmons and get yourself inside the Facebook group. You can submit questions both ways. Choose whichever one works best for you. Smash that like button if you liked this video and be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already because I post writing videos and publishing videos every single Wednesday and I would love to have you here in the community. And next week, I have something really special planned. It's gonna be a really fun video. So stick around for that. Until then, rock on. I don't know how long does it take you to read 5,000 words. It takes me like a half hour, depending on the sloppiness of the writing. <laughs> My own writing, I'm talking about. <laughs> how do I also give them enough detail that they have something to go on? They have a visual picture in their mind did I just say visual picture? It's so much, it's so much. These questions today are just so like, I could take an hour to reply to each one. <laughs>